Hi, my name's Rachel Schubeck and I'm the Project Officer for Learning Difficulties based at Ciru. Due to the recent health requirements, um, we at Ciru are finding better innovative ways to support staff in schools in a more flexible manner. For this reason, we've developed this web webinar to help staff in accessing ABLES. Before you embark on the ABLES training, please think about the students for whom you think this could be useful. The ABLES tool is targeted to be used with students who have an intellectual disability who are not accessing foundation in English or maths. If your students are currently accessing foundation or above, then this might not provide the support that you're hoping for. And you would probably be better looking at um, looking to your school's suite of assessments for students. Some sites have used elements of the assessment more widely. And if you are interested in hearing about these cases, please contact me at Ciru on 8235 2871. Before we commence the training, please copy the link on the slide and paste it into your browser to access the Victorian ABLES site. To access the video, you'll need to scroll down the ABLES page and click on the video link halfway down the page. Once you've watched the, this, please return to the training. I would suggest that you pause now. This slide is just basically in acknowledgement to Kerry Woods and Karen Underwood. Both have been key in producing the work for abilities-based learning and educational support. They are both based in Victoria. Kerry Woods was the lead through the Victorian, um, through the University of Victoria, and Karen Underwood has been the lead for the Victorian Education Department. The ABLES project is a collaboration between the university and the um, education department. And these are the two pivotal people who have visited South Australia and supported us in our journey. ABLES basically is an assessment that allows educators to support, uh, to look at where students are, um, assess, uh, assess where students with disabilities currently are working, look at the skills that they have, and then make some um, suggestions and recommendations to support them within the area that they're working at this current point in time. Um, within the ABLES platform, you can generate reports. There's a rocket report, which is referred to in the video, which is actually called a readiness report. And that is the most detailed report that teachers seem to appreciate using. It does have um, three pages. The first page shows where the child is working. It also The second page makes the link to the curriculum um, area in which the child is working in. And the third page is a page with some strategies to support teachers in personalising learning for students. There's also guidance materials and additional supports within the ABLES platform that you can access. ABLES um, allows us to track students um, through their twice yearly assessments. The first round of assessment is from January through to the end of term two in beginning of July. And the second assessment round runs from the beginning, um, end of July, beginning of term three until the end of term four. The ABLES journey officially began in 2007 when a partnership between the University of Melbourne and the Education Department resulted in looking at students' proficiency across four curriculum areas. These areas were English speaking and listening, English reading and writing, personal learning and interpersonal development. The trial involved 77 Victorian schools with 700 teachers and 1,700 students. Staff trialled the ABLES assessment and provided feedback to enhance or make changes. The ABLES site was then adjusted and reviewed until such a time that it was agreed that ABLES was providing accurate links to curriculum and the strategies were supporting learning. Each further assessment has taken approximately two years to get right um, before it is used with students. And we now have nine assessments available. Okay, to date, um, the ABLES assessment tool now has nine assessments that are available for teachers to use. Some teachers might decide to use all nine, but they may also decide only to use a few within specific areas to get information on their students. Um, it's currently being used in Victoria, Western Australia in all sectors, and it's also on trial in ACT, Queensland and Northern Territory. 
South Australia has an agreement with the Victorian Education Department and we have been rolling this out for the past two years. The department has permission to use the Towards Foundation levels, which are A to D, for students who are accessing ABLES and who are not yet at the foundation level of our Australian curriculum. It's especially useful for students with an intellectual disability and it is likely to be mandatory for students who have not yet achieved foundation within English or maths due to a disability. The ABLES curriculum was developed in Victoria and as it was developed there, it actually links to their Victorian Curriculum Standards and Assessment Authority. However, the work that we have been doing in South Australia over the past two years has been making the links between the Victorian Curriculum and the Australian Curriculum. We now have a scope and sequence that will detail the additional unpacked levels, which are the Towards Foundation levels, that teachers can access so that they can see where the um, levels fit within our Australian curriculum levels. ABLES allows teachers to access um, those four additional levels, which are a logical and sequential unpacking of the foundation skills in the Australian curriculum. They are called the Towards Foundation Levels A, B, C and D, and we call them ABLES SA Towards Foundation Levels. So on this slide, I'm just demonstrating a bit of an example of how the level is unpacked within the digital technology area. So for a student who is in level A, you can see that the student is really at that pre-intentional level. Now this may be a student who has quite significant disabilities and who may appear um, to be quite removed from the learning experience. They've got that beginning intention, but yeah, they're needing a lot of support and a lot of scaffolding from the adults that are around them. As they move into level B, those students are starting to become less reliant on those high levels of support with an adult, but they're still quite reliant and are needing a lot of verbal prompts or gestures or physical prompts to facilitate that learning. So the adult would still be very, very instrumental within that learning um, level in supporting the student and maybe needing to use a physical prompt to help the child engage with the activity. When we move into level C, students are actually starting to have some sort of intentional participation and they're starting to respond more consistently. So there is that lessening of need from the adult who is working with them, but they still obviously need a lot of support, but there is that beginning intention and response that is more consistent for students who are typically in level C. By the time students get to level D, they're starting to build their independence. So they might be the students who are working possibly within a group, but maybe alongside the group rather than participating with the group um, in a constructive, interactive sort of way. So they're, they are participating, but this learning would typically look a little bit more like parallel play. Once we're moving into that foundation level, students are actually starting to participate and engage in a more independent way with their learning. They might be able to manipulate and present data and they might be able to find ways to create meaning. So you're moving from a very, very pre-intentional level at the earliest level A, moving into that area that we would expect to see students who are in reception, that level of engagement and learning. This slide can actually be accessed on the guidance materials. It, under the curriculum areas for either English or mathematics or movement. It's basically the overview of the scope and sequence that shows how students have connect to the foundation level through the levels A, B, C and D. I'm not going to go into any great detail on this slide because you can't, it's, it's too tricky to see, it's too small for this slide, but it just shows you what you're looking for when you go onto the site and you access the guidance materials. Through the ABLES assessment, we can make judgments about what the intended learning is for the student. We've got the four unpacked areas of the foundation level, which is giving us a bit of a sense of where students can enter at their level and we can then actually really intentionally teach for them to make improvements and to move to the next level. It helps us to look at what learning would look like at their level and the strategies that you'll find within the assessment will give you lots of ideas as to what activities you might be doing to support the student. 
It also gives us that understanding of what is the skills that the student brings to this activity. What do they already know how to do so that we can help them to learn from where they're at and help them to make connections to the next level. And it gives us a little bit of evidence and support to know that we are giving students the opportunity to learn at their specific level. Previously, um, we I stated that this um, was designed in Victoria and was based on a Victorian curriculum. However, it does lend itself beautifully to the current South Australian climate. It connects really well to our TEFL framework in terms of our learning and design. So in terms of looking, using the ABLES assessment, we can actually make a connection to the curriculum of what it is that the child needs to know, what the intended learning is going to be, and we can support them to learn at their level. Therefore, our pedagogy will be, do, will be giving us those strategies and specific activities that we can be doing to support students to help them in their learning journey. It also connects really well to our one plan document. By using the ABLES tool, we are able to get a good understanding of where the child is currently within their learning journey. We also know while we're doing our um, planning on our one plan or if we're using an individual plan for a student, that through using the ABLES tool, we're able to make some assumptions about their learning within the areas of literacy, numeracy, within their social development, personal and communication. All these areas can be covered via the various assessment tools. It also connects really well to our general capabilities You'll see where the stars, the stars indicate that there is an assessment that directly relates to the general capabilities. So there is an assessment for link, at literacy, numeracy, ICT capabilities, critical and creative thinking, and personal and social capabilities. The other two areas, ethical understanding and intercultural understanding, at this point do not have an assessment that relates to them. I believe that there is somebody within Victoria who is working on a PhD in intercultural understanding, but at this point that's still a work in progress. So when we look at our learning areas and our general capabilities, we can see that there are assessments that are available through ABLES to support English, maths, health and physical PE, technologies, critical and creative thinking, personal and social capabilities. At this point, there's not a separate assessment for, for example, science. However, by using the critical and creative thinking and the English assessments, you will gather information that will support and help to influence your science program. And this can be said to um, have some bearing for some of the other areas as well. So to access ABLES, um, the best way to do that is to Google ABLES portal and you will then get directed to the first screen which will ask you to select the state that you're living in. We select South Australia which will then take us to the next screen which shows us where you need to enter your school number. Now to access your school number you will need to contact Rachel at Siru. My email will be on the last slide, so please select my email, send through your details and I will send you a link with your school number and password. Even during this time of uncertainty, emails will be responded to within 24 hours from Monday to Friday. This slide here will show you exactly what the ABLES portal looks like and when you look, there's eight areas that you can select. If you go into um, the guidance materials, you will find that there is a number of tutorials that will show you how to access each of these buttons in detail. So my recommendation would be that when before you use the ABLES portal that you do go to the guidance materials so that you're able to access and see each area and how you need to support students. When registering a student, you need to use their educational ID number. So it must be an ED ID for our data purposes so that we can track the student. Um, so when you do register them, make sure you have that handy just to make it easier. If you click on the um, assess students, you'll see that you have a number of options that come up. There are the um, English speaking and listening, English reading and viewing. And if you 
click on the personal and social, you will be given three additional options there, which are on the second screen underneath. You'll see that there's a link at the top of this slide, which is an active link for a, the tutorials under the guidance materials. I would recommend that when you actually have a minute, you can either pause now and go on to this, or you can wait until the end of this, um, until you've finished all of the training, and you can then access it by going to the guidance materials, the um, ABLES tutorials, and click on Assess Students. And the video within it will detail very succinctly how you assess a student and how you need to manage the assessment tool, which is a teacher judgment tool. This page just is an example of what one of the questions might look like for when we're doing the ABLES assessment. I just want to bring your attention to the very last point. The very last point that says is moving towards but has not yet achieved these skills basically means that the student has not achieved the top criteria. The, the questions for the assessment are set out as the easiest to demonstrate at the top and the more difficult right down to the second to last point. So when doing the assessment, if you look at a student and you can see that the first one says that not, they notice another person's distress but does not attempt to comfort or support that student, if you don't believe that the student actually even seems to notice another student's um, distress, you would go for that very last point which says is moving towards but has not yet achieved this behaviour. Now one of the things that I often like to point out for people is this is a teacher judgment assessment. So when dealing with any of the questions, you really need to have a look and think about what is the most typical response that you would have for that child. You also need to have a little bit of an understanding across your site because otherwise if you have different people with different opinions, you'll find that your data may not represent what you want it to represent. So my thinking often when I tackle an assessment, if I am stuck and I'm looking at a student and at I'm not sure how to respond, I do one of two things. One, I will take a note of the question, I'll write it down and I'll move on and I'll just do the lowest one that I think that they could possibly manage. I would then go away and purposely observe for that behaviour and when I felt comfortable, I would return to the assessment at a later date. Or two, I sit down and I think, okay, does the child do this reliably? Is it something that they need further instruction and further support? If the answer is they need further instruction and further support, then I'm not going to tick that as the option that they can achieve and I will go to the one prior to that level. So for example, if I'm looking at a student and it says offers comfort and support when prompted by a familiar adult, if I had a student who could offer comfort and support when prompted by a familiar adult, adult but only if it was their sibling for example, I might say well actually they haven't actually been able to demonstrate this behaviour across a number of settings, they've only been able to do it when it relates to somebody that is actually cl quite close to them. So I might say that they notice another's um, distress but does not provide comfort or support. This is the types of assessment reports that you can access using the ABLES portal and as you can see there are four different types of reports. The readiness report which is the first report is the one that typically teachers find to be of the most use. It's a three page report that gives you advice and information about where their skills are, how that connects to curriculum and strategies to support them to move forward. The second report is a class report and this is actually quite useful if you have a number of students in your class who are on ABLES. If it is one child within a mainstream class, you may find that there is little to be gained from using the class report. If you have a number of students, you can it might give you some ideas about how to group students more efficiently. The profile report is a convenient summary of all the assessments that you've undertaken. So for example, if you've only undertaken two assessments, there will only be two assessments listed on there. If you have done all nine, you will see them all with a basically a very basic description of what the level is that the student is currently working at within that 
information. And the school report is a convenient summary for the principal to note where students are at and how they're working and whether or not they have uh, are achieving the goals that you wanted them to. Normally when I do this slide live, I would you would only see one box coming up at a time. So you just need to bear with me, sorry. Um, everything is up on it at the moment. So we will be moving from the bottom through to the top. So the dark line within the box represents where a student is working at this point in time. That dark line does move within the box. So we do know if a child is at the very early stages of that level or if they're moving closer or if they're very close to completing that level. So if we look at the first box, the first box is showing us that the child currently is working within ABLE's SA Level A. And a child at this point would be engaging with objects in a media sensory environment. This would be a student with quite significant areas of um, disability or need who might be accessing but not really making choices of their own. Once we move up to the next box, we're now looking at ABLE's level, um, ABLE's SA level B. And at this point, students are starting to explore and interact with different pictures, shapes and sounds because we are looking at reading and writing. So they're starting to see that there are differences between some of the materials that are presented to them. When we move up to the next box, we're now working with an ABLE's SA level C. And at this point, they're starting to recognise that there is actually a little bit of a difference, subtle or otherwise, between letters, shapes and numbers. So they're starting to see the differences in how the consistency in letters or the consistency and difference in numbers. They're able to start to clarify or um, see the differences. In the next box, we're at ABLE's SA Level D. And in this level, we're starting to look at students who are beginning to start to look at letters and pictures and seeing that they can communicate a message. This might be a child who typically might come running up to you with a page full of lines on it and they might tell you that this is actually a letter and it might be a letter for, San for Santa. And in the, this level, we would often attribute meaning to what their attempt is. So we'd say, wow, that's fantastic. I can see you've written a letter. So they're starting to realise that they can communicate with using um, paper and pencils, etc., and symbols. The next level up is learning to use relationships between letters and sounds, and that is our foundation level. So we're at that point where students are starting to make this, uh, starting to be engaged within phonemic awareness activities, understanding that there's rhyme, starting to understand phonics and that sounds and squiggles carry um, meaning. So you can actually see why we are really pushing ABLES as something that is really, really useful for students who are at that pre-foundation or moving towards foundation level because there is a lot of rich information that sits below foundation. The next level up where we're learning to use conventions of text presentation, that relates to levels one and two in Australian curriculum. And the final box, learning to apply and extend understandings of text, that is directly relating us to level three and four in Australian curriculum. So if you have a look at our um, at the continuum, you will see starting at a very, very basic level of engaging with objects and immediate sensory environment, all the way up to those students who are learning to apply and extend understanding and produce different texts for different purposes. So this is an example of an actual report, and this is a report on a student looking at the area of speaking and listening. And as you can see on the first um, page, that the student is working at the very, very early stages of level C because they're in the third box. So the first page will show you always the rocket of where the child is and where they're sitting. And there will be a little descriptor that sits along the rocket to tell you exactly where the child's working at that point. The second page of the assessment will show you where the child actually fits within the curriculum. So it will show you English speaking and listening, Australian curriculum, ABLES SA, Level C. If you look at the first paragraph that's within that second page of the um, assessment report, you'll see that the descriptor comes directly from the Victorian curriculum document. 
it is a complete copy and paste of their work because the work has been done by a number of people. It's good work and we are not going to make any changes to it. We don't have the um, extended levels within our um, curriculum documents at this point in time. So we are borrowing them directly from Victorian curriculum. So that first paragraph within your report will always relate to the level descriptor for level A, B, C or D. So this shows the second paragraph and it's usually the second paragraph, but if there are a number of paragraphs, it will be the very last paragraph. And as you can see we're at where we've highlighted that, that paragraph, that it actually is a descriptor of level D. So at all times when we are looking at where the student is now, we're projecting to where they need to be. So when we have a curriculum descriptor, we will describe the level they're currently working at, which is level C, but we know that the student is working towards level D. This can actually be really, really handy when it comes to the process of needing to write goals for our students. So by using the descriptor within the level D, we can write our longer term aim because we know that that's what we're working towards. When we go to write our SMARTER goals, we can be looking at where the student is within level C and constructing their learning goals to support them at the level that they're currently at. And this is the third page of the assessment and probably the page that most teachers really, really enjoy. This is the page that gives you a number of different strategies of what you might be doing for a student who's in level C moving towards level D. The um, strategies are do go within an order of the earliest sort of skills up until moving further and further towards level D curriculum. What I would suggest to teachers when they look at this final page is as a visual person, I have two highlighters and a pen. And what I do is I go through with one highlighter and I highlight what is it that I'm already doing now that's already within my program that I'm doing for all students. Then I get the other highlighter and I go through what is it that I would like to do for this student. I hadn't thought of that or perhaps they have suggested something that maybe I used four years ago and hadn't thought to use with this student. So it gives me the opportunity to be able to visually at a quick glance see what it is that I'm trying to work on. The last, the reason I have a pen is because not all of these are going to be appropriate for every single student. We know that these strategies need to cover a wide age range for some students. So there might, you need to think about the child's age and stage of development to then look at whether there are some strategies in there that are not appropriate. For some students, there might be ideas and strategies that might be more useful in a secondary setting rather than a junior primary setting. So you need to make those judgments as the teacher. The other thing that I look at is, for example, my last position was working with students with severe and multiple disabilities. And the dot point that says provide graded um, support for dexterity is not a goal I would have worked on with children who had cerebral palsy. I would have spent the time working on an alternative pencil or some other system to support them because I know that due to their physical limitations, dexterity would not have been a goal I would be working on for that child at that time. This is the second type of report that's available and this is the group report. This is typically useful if you have more than one student in your class who is accessing ABLES. We can look at one curriculum area such as reading, writing and viewing and we can see where students are sitting in terms of their skill level. From that we can make decisions about grouping. We can see whether some students are at a similar level or whether some students um, are needing one-to-one -one support. And it helps us to make more efficient use of our time when we're working with our students. It also, like the other assessments, will show you the first round and the second round. So it can show you how much progress students have made across the two rounds within the year. This third report is what we call the profile report. Now this one is a convenient summary of any assessments that you have done with a student. So if by chance you've done one assessment, you will only have one assessment noted on this sheet. But if you have done all nine, 
they will all be noted on this sheet. And what it shows is how students are working within their own um, personal um, areas. It can capture up to 18 months of data and you can see on the sheet that it has the most recent, second most recent and third most recent assessment. So it is actually able to capture data over time and show how students are progressing towards their goals. This is a, again, not a personalised piece of information. However, it is one that I have in the past shown parents because it does actually show how students are moving towards their goal. This um, school report is probably most useful for leadership or principals. It does just show how students are progressing across a period of time. And as you can see on this example, it shows a progress across two years. Um, it does, it has the most recent and it has another period so you can actually compare and contrast and see how students are moving. What you will note on this one is this is actually a real example and you can see that consistently sometimes you don't always see students making logical progress um, and in some situations it might look like they've gone backwards. The important questions that leadership should be asking if they're looking at these assessments and wondering why a student has gone backwards is I often think is this a student who might have some significant challenges or health needs or has not been at school or might have had a trauma of some sort which might explain why their learning looks as if it's gone backwards. The other thing to consider is if there's been many changes within a class. For example, if a teacher has, if one class has had many contract teachers, you might find that the way that the data is interpreted has changed between one person to the next, and therefore you might find that students look like they're going backwards but in fact it is the way that the report and the information within the report has been interpreted not in fact the child's learning. So saying that I again want to reiterate how important it is that the whole that as a school you have an understanding of how you're going to tackle and moderate these assessments. For one of our assessments which is in the personalised learning for um, self, looking at self and social, there has been an attempt to look at students with ASD and the differing skills that they perhaps bring to some of these assessments. When you register a student, you are asked if the child has ASD and it is particularly for this one assessment. This slide really just shows just some of the ways that they've adapted some of the language to take into consideration that some students who have ASD might need different ways of tackling um, different strategies etc to support them. So for example if you look at um, the purple ink is the differences that have been made for a student with ASD. When you go down to generalising knowledge and coping with change and distraction You'll see that for a student with ASD, we're also considering interactions including multiple people because we know that the social deficit is something that is a challenge for them as well. Now I've often had a lot of people who've asked me what happens with that student who we know, who we would instinctively believe has ASD, but they don't have a diagnosis. And generally I would say to people, due to freedom of information, I would always put them on when I register them as not having ASD. If you would like to access some of the strategies for that one assessment, then I would create a test person within, the, um, within your registering of students. And so you use a test and you can then mark them as ASD and do that assessment to see if you can get any different strategies. So this is the guidance materials screen which you can access from the main screen um, for ABLES. I would suggest that at the conclusion of this or when you're about to embark on using ABLES that you access this screen and go into the ABLES tutorials. That will open a second screen within your browser and you will then actually be able to go through every single point within the assessment and have a look at how to access all the different parts of the ABLES assessment. It's a really useful thing to do to show you how to register students, how to change their classes when you get to the end of the year and classes change, and also how to 
produce reports and do assessments. This screen also has a fact sheet which you could share with parents um, which is available and it just explains a little bit more about ABLES. It can take you to the ABLES website which is where the video that you accessed earlier came from. There is a link to the Victorian curriculum standards so that for teachers who want more information about the descriptors around the level A, B, C and D, you're able to access that. The curriculum tab will take you to Australian curriculum and the English, Mathematics, Health and PE are the scope and sequence that I talked about earlier that show you how the foundation level has been unpacked and how it relates to the Australian curriculum level. When we look at the ABLES assessment, we're using multiple sources of information. We're needing to watch, observe our students, talk to others. So at, in this, when we talk about talking to others, we might be using the input of our SSOs who work closely with the students. We might also be talking to NIT teachers. We might be talking to parents. It's about gathering that picture of the student and getting the most accurate information. We might be reading information from um, previous assessments or we might be using some of our own tests that we use within our class. Moderating our judgments is also really important. We need to be able to interpret the information. We need to be able to have examples of how the students are working and know that it's supported and um, within the context. Thinking about the different contexts and the student across multiple learning areas. But the thing that I really love about ABLES is this whole idea of shifting the focus. The fact that it's all about what are the skills that the student can develop, it's not about what are the difficulties that they face. We're talking, it's constantly in that positive language of this is their skills and this is how we can help to move them forward. We're not looking at scores. We're thinking we've got evidence to support our inference. And I've spoken many times to people about the fact that there's been times where I've worked with students and I've known that they've made progress, but I haven't had anything that I can measure that on. So this assessment tool does measure those very, very small steps in their achievement and it helps us to be able to have some evidence to support that inference of what we know that students are doing. And the last part that I think is really important is it's about our students. It's not about this is our teaching program, this is what we're going to do and all the students have to fit into it. It's about what can I do to get the best out of my students. And I really like that because the strategies are all developed to try and link with what a teacher would normally do, but also to help students to learn at the point that they're ready to learn and help them to progress to the next level. So this is a slide that was given to me by, from Victoria. It is actually their data from 2015 to 2017 and it is using the 1700 students that were used in this project. So basically they had students at each level. They had a group of students in level A, B, C, D, foundation one and two, three and four. And they took a midpoint of all those students to say this is where they're currently working. They came back two years later and with the same group of students measured how they had gone and found the next midpoint. And as you can see, in all cases, students did make improvement. This is part of the information that we can look at, which is quite exciting because it does show us that this tool can do no harm. And as educators, our main cause is to make sure that we're supporting students to make improvements and that we are doing no harm. So I like this slide because it does show that ABLES has actually done what it intended to do. This slide really is an acknowledgement of all the work that's been done to bring the ABLES um, suite of resources together. We know that the university worked very hard on building the information and in fact it was the um, the result of seven people's PhD. There is a number of readings that are all that are available and I'm really happy if you want to contact me if you would like to have a look at the evidence and the information that went underneath the able the making of the ABLES tool. They also partnered with the Victorian Education Department and there's a number of people within that list who we know have done a lot of significant work in education over the years. So please, if you have any questions or need 
further support. Um, I understand this is not the best way of delivering the training, but in this current climate, it's probably the best option we've got at the moment. So I am available on, via phone or via email, and I'm very happy to take any questions. Remember, the only dumb question is the one that you don't ask. So please make contact either by phone or email, and I'm really, really happy to help you in your ABLES journey.